My name is Carlo Nisso. I'm a certified Tonisco Hot Tub Machine Trainer. Welcome to the Tonisco Junior Training. Today I'm going to show you the new concept for Danfoss Hot Tub Power Valves called Tonisco Redline. The concept is two suitcases. The other one contains the hot tub machine and the other contains the adapters that you need for the certain type of ball ball. The new Tonisco Junior is designed so that it will fit to every single valve in the world. So basically the set then always comes so that you have the modular hot tub machine set and then the right adapter set depending on what type of valve you're hot tapping into. This is a normal weldable weldable ball valve and for that we will use the same machine kit adapter set for normal weldable weldable ball valves. You can check the manual and see how long your drilling shaft has to be. And the basic idea here is that every junior has a base shaft. Then, depending on what type of valve you're using, you will build the shaft to its right length. We have short extension and longer extension. And we also have a special shaft extension socket. If you have already built the machine, and you realize that the machine, the, the shaft is too short. In this case, because it's DN50, I believe that the base shaft plus one long extension will do just fine. So I will now assemble the shaft. I will take the chuck. Again. Put it on place, not tighten it too much. Take the hole saw. Screw it in. Securing the hole saw with the pins. Like this. Take the pilot drill with the magnet. Insert the magnet on the pilot drill, like this. Then again, place it on the chuck and tighten the pilot drill. First, slowly, and then take a little bit back and secure the, that it's on the notch. And tighten it firmly. Then again, we will take the metal cutting paste, we will put it on the pilot drill and on the hole saw. Just a little bit is enough. Assemble the machine, make a test pressure, and start hot tapping. So this kit contains adapters from DN25 to DN50. The principle in all the weldable weldable connection adapters is the same. You have two parts, the adapter part and the clamp part. And then you have the adapter screws. I will show you how to assemble the weldable weldable adapter. For these types of valves and these types of o-ring ceilings, it's important to always use lubricant. Put the lubricant on the ceiling, place the adapter part on the valve, and insert the clamp counterpart. Make sure that the upper part of the adapter is pushed all the way down. 
like that. Then secure it with the adapter screws. First put it a little bit, then install the other one. And because it's an O-ring sealing on a pipe, you don't have to tighten the bolts too much. Just make sure that the adapter is even. So tighten the bolts so that it feels that the adapter upper body and the clamp section that they are solid. But don't over tighten it because you will want the o-ring to kind of find its place become tight on its own so you don't want to over tighten it like this now it feels good of course we will see how it goes when we do the test pressure after that we will put the shaft inside the valve take the body and the lubricant we'll lubricate the shaft then place the body on the adapter also lift a little bit the shaft and then we will screw the body on the adapter And of course, with the bigger sizes, you are unable to fit the whole saw uh, after the adapter. So you have to first build the body plus the adapter and then mount it on the wall. But now with this size, we are able to do it like this. And now we see here that the shaft looks really good in lengthwise, but we will secure it or double check it. We have the fully opened fully opened feed socket we will again place it on the body and it will automatically find the most suitable starting point and we see again that it's it's near the middle section so we know that we have enough hot tapping space here and then we know that the shaft is right length but before we do before we go further i want to again test that the valve has enough space to shut to close and open so now i have the shaft all the way up I'm going to close the valve, it closes normally, we have space there, so now I know that after the hot tub I'm able to also close the valve. I will slowly put the shaft on the pipe, I will put the feed socket again, open it a little bit so I won't miss the spot. Turn it again, automatically locks its place. And now we can do the pressure test. We will use compressed air. It's fast and it's easy to visually find leakages. I will put the manometer on, check that we have the six bars that we are looking for. Then I'm gonna test the welding seam. Weld looks good, there's no leakage, and it's also good to check the adapter that there's no leakages in the adapter. Of course, if the adapter for some reason leaks a little bit, it is still possible to make the, the hot tap. That is not so crucial, but extremely important is that the weld seam does not leak at all, of course. Now everything looks good. The pressure is stable, there's no leakages. Then I will 
release the pressure. Put the man rider back. And now we are ready to start hot tapping. We will insert the drive unit. We will try avoid hitting motions so that we do not destroy the pilot drill. We will lock the electric drive on its place. And then we will do the double check. So we have made the test pressure for the welding seams. The adapter is tight, not over tightened. The feed socket was all the way up before starting. So now we know that it's automatically the right place to start. Electric drive unit is locked. Manometer is in place. So we're good to go. Then always before starting the machine, take a little bit back from the feed socket so that when you're adjusting the, the RPMs, the shaft moves freely. With the pilot drill, take the fastest maximum RPM. So gear number two and the fastest from the RPM selection. Put your ear protection on and you're ready to go. What I forget to mention last time is that when doing the pilot drill, pilot drill drilling, it's good to stop the feed. Do not do the pilot drill drilling with one motion because you want to avoid long spirals. Now the pilot drill is through. You can hear it from the machine and you can feel it from the socket. Then. Just a couple more, more turns with the drive. And then you can find the whole source starting point without the turning motion. We are at the end of this adjustment for the drilling distance. So what we do then, we adjust the socket again. We put our body weight on the socket, slowly push it, Turn it counterclockwise and find the next place to put the socket and start the whole saw cutting. It locks into place. Now we can find the place for the hole saw just by turning the socket. Here it is, it doesn't go anymore. We know that now the hole saw is touching the pipe. Take a little bit back. Take a good stance for the, from the machine. And the good stance is where you are really able to support the electric drive unit to your body. Then we want to reduce the RPMs again. We take the gear number one. And here again, we choose, I would say the second or the third fastest. Always when making a hot tub with Tonisco tools, remember to start slow when the hole saw is just starting to cut the pipe. And then when it gets in the middle section, it gets a little bit easier, but always remember that you should never use force. Let the machine do the job. And also if you are in any kind of bad position or Anyway, in a hard place, always take the manometer off if you think that there's a possibility that your stance might vary or you may in otherwise hit it because that's easily going to cause some uh, incidents. And again here, when the hole saw is, has penetrated the main pipe, you can hear it from the electric drive unit and you can feel it from the feed socket. But in order to be sure, I want to make few turns by turning it and also then check it with the feed socket. So. Few more turns. 
turns, and then without turning the shaft, I will double check that the penetration has been successful by turning only the feed socket. So now again, we have successfully made the hole to the main pipe. Then we will remove the machine and close the valve. Again, put your body weight on the feed socket, take it away from the locking notch and slowly let the pressure lift the machine up. Then, before closing the valve, let's take all the items away from the shaft. So when we take away the pressure, the shaft doesn't hit the ball. And also one good hint is if you're uncertain that did you get all the waste or especially if you're not using magnet it's really important to flush the drilling chamber before you close the valve i'm going to show you how it's basically just like the same principle as releasing the pressure so flushing the drilling chamber after the hot tub just put the pressure relief hose to its place and don't do anything else than just open the control cock. And le let the flow flush the drilling chamber. After we have done that, we have basically done everything that we can to avoid any waste going to the ball. We have used the magnet, we have stopped the pilot drill, drilling on the on the halfway and we have flushed the drilling chamber so now we'll we will close the valve then we will again take the hose and release the pressure from the chamber while holding the shaft so basically now the hot tap is successfully done. Now we just disassemble the machine. And like in this size, we can disassemble the machine body and the shaft first. So basically now the hot tap process has been successful. We have the coupon, the power priors are in good condition. The pilot drill is in good condition and we have had a lot of waste with the magnet. So now again, we disassemble the machine, disassemble the shaft and clean everything. And also the removal of this adapter. Usually what I do, if I have more than one, I always just unscrew the other part, open the clamp and remove the adapter as a whole set like this and then it's fast to clamp on to the next one but now i only have one so i'm gonna put it aside after the hot tub work is done it's really important to disassemble the shaft and the machine and clean all the parts if you have a compressor you can do it easily and fast unscrew all the parts Clean the threads. Make sure that there's no drilling waste or anything else. And basically now you can put the adapter back to its place on the fluid case. This way the machine will last forever and you always find your tools ready to use for the next time. We start the disassembly of the shaft by removing the pilot drill. Then taking off 
the coupon as well as the drilling waste around the magnet. It's really hard to get the magnet totally clean, but the pilot drill. You can. Now I will show you how to disassemble the shaft. You will take the special tools, special Tonisco keys from the hot tub machine suitcase. You take the opening pins, two pieces, then you will place the special key on the shaft, right where you have these holes for the pins. You will put the pin through the key and the hole in the shaft, and then you can use the key opening to unlock the shaft. It's good to have a hammer so that you can give a small, small push to the chuck so it opens easily. Now when you have removed the chuck, you see the pins will fall out and it's easy to unscrew the whole saw. Also these parts clean them and put them back. The same with the shaft extension. You can leave the same key on the place, place it on the on the hole on the shaft and the other other end you can put directly to the upper end of the shaft hold it and open it if you take your time and always disassemble and clean the shaft and the machine we will guarantee that the machine will last for decades. <laughs>